Is architecture a profession or a discipline, or can it be both? Um, well, architecture is, in fact, both. Um, it is a profession and it's also a discipline, and it's also, for me, it's a way of life. Um, so, you know, we have um, the way in which I guess that uh, research is carried out in schools of architecture, uh, but we also, it's very much as a profession, it's very much a part of um, the wider construction industry. Um, for me personally, um, it is both those things, but it's also um, an attitude of mind. The Reba's attention outside London appears to be centering on Liverpool, if that's correct to say. What does this mean for other northern cities such as Manchester? Um, the the Royal, Institute, Royal Institute of British Architects um, has uh, 11 regions, uh, and so it's not just focusing on the northwest. It just so happens that the Northwest Regional Office is relocating, so we're taking an opportunity to um, occupy Man Island, and with that will come um, uh, a gallery so that we can actually show our drawings collection. Unlike most professional organisations uh, and institutes, the RIBA has 11 regional offices, uh, and so its emphasis is. Has, has always been regionally based, but it's not just particular to the northwest. In fact, in the northeast, uh, where our RBA Enterprises is located, we are looking to acquire a building there, and who knows, in the future, it may well be that the gallery is based there. But where the gallery is based is actually not that important. What is important is where the regional office is based, and, and that that office is actually uh, accessible to all members. Do you think there's a polarisation between London and the regions? And if there is, how would you intend to bridge that gap? Uh, I think that there is a, there's currently a polarisation in construction activity uh, and certainly there is polarisation in workload currently. I don't think that there is a polarisation in terms of support for our members. Uh, in fact, I would argue and, and certainly my role as president is that the support for members outside of London is actually more significant than it is, um, than it is in London. Arguably some of uh, the Reba's most important members are students. How do you intend to sort of bolster their position as we come out of this recession? We have 12,000 student members and I think that what we're looking at at the moment with the membership review is how we can um, support them. I think that, uh, and, and particularly how we might support uh, post part one students. Uh, that's why we're looking at um, a, a graduate category at the moment and thinking about what benefits graduate members wish. But then also going beyond there, we're actually looking at part two students and that's why we're, we're, we're reinvigorating the associate category. So the support for students we recognise is actually varies in degrees according to the stage of um, the progression. But I would emphasise that the, the RIBA uh, for a good number of years now is very much ab uh, about supporting students because it recognises quite rightly that that's the future of the profession. Do you think the UK can continue to lead in architectural education on a world stage? Since 1958 when the Oxford Conference uh, there's been a great deal of thought applied to architectural education in the UK and in fact the model that was actually talked about then almost exists today and that is why uh, and, and the rigour of that consideration that is why the architectural, educa architectural education in the UK uh, is so highly respected. What I think we have to recognise um, is that that was 60 years ago and we have to think about how architectural education needs to move on. We need to think about how it actually engages more with practice. And of course we have to think about um, the, 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 the problems that students currently have with, with debt and so on. So now is the time to actually think about, rethink about uh, architectural education. 
the RIBA, together with the Education Reform Group and SCOSA, uh, are doing exactly that. And I would like to think that following the EU directive that we will see a review of architectural education in the UK which will keep it very much at the for forefront of standards within the world. Collaboration was a strong theme in your presidential manifesto. How do you envisage the RIBA interacting with its counterparts around the world in the future? Yes, collaboration um, is an important theme uh, of my presidential term because I recognise that and have recognised for some time, even in the work of my practice, that when we've delivered um, a significant building, it's been with the input of so many people, and not just um, the uh, building environment consultants, but also the delivery team as well. They've been an absolutely essential part of, of what we've delivered as a practice. And so collaboration uh, and the need to collaborate uh, um, is really quite important to me, but of course it's very important to the government as well. The government recognised that if we're actually going to drive construction costs down, or if we're actually going to improve uh, construction periods on site, collaboration is one way of, of dealing with that. And of course building, a, building information modelling is a very, is going to be, is an essential tool um, uh, you know, in, uh, in ensuring the collaboration that occurs across the whole of the industry. Um, now what we've seen is various institutes um, preparing their own uh, approach to collaboration, producing various papers, but ironically the institutes are not necessarily collaborating in talking about collaboration. And one idea that I've been doing and at the moment, and one idea that I've been looking at and something that we're going to be developing in the new year is whether it's a conference or not, I'm prepared to be quite flexible about what the um, output might be. Um, but what I'm hoping to do is to actually get together all the institutes, the, all the building environment institutes, um, in a, a conference or a debate about what we mean by collaboration and whether or not we can actually distill a, a single model that we can then, in a very concentrated way, pan-professional way present to government as to the way in which we should be collaborating. How important is the RIBA in preparing and promoting international competitions? The RIBA could do a lot more in promoting international competitions. Uh, we have a very active uh, RIBA competitions office and at the moment um, I've commissioned a review of the way in which, not just the way in which the RIBA competitions office conducts and manages competitions, but actually starts to think about how, what is the best process of structuring competition. What we sometimes forget is actually competitions are, another, are simply another form of procurement. They're for clients, not necessarily just a, another means of an architect procuring work. And a part of that review will actually be looking at how we might actually then use those guidance notes to promote competitions internationally, but also the way in which competitions are conducted. I recognise that there are many, many other countries, particularly European countries, who actually have a, 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 a much more structured approach to competitions, and, and we need to think about how we might emulate that. Notably, the Serling Prize, which your practice won in 1996, didn't come with the usual £20,000 prize money this year. Is this because sponsors are wary to invest in the institute, the profession, the profession, or is it simply a sign of the times? There was no prize money this year for the Serling Prize, uh, simply because um, our development office and the RIBA generally has an ambition to secure a much more long-term, uh, sustainable sponsorship for the Sterling Prize. For this year, it wasn't possible to actually realise that, and so in many ways, I would think the prize money for the Sterling Prize this year was a one-off, but clearly that is very much going to be dependent on our securing sponsorship, in, as I say, in the long term for the future. 
That said, I think there's been a great debate about the importance of the, uh, the, the, the prize money. Obviously, it was important to me in, uh, when, in those early days when we were starting in practice. But there is a, um, an opposing argument which actually says the prize and the recognition um, is, is, is more important. Uh, I tend to sort of lean towards the former, but as I say, I think that's going to be very much dependent on our ability to secure sponsorship uh, next year. Thank you very much. Is that it? That's it.